Hey everybody, after a short break of posting videos, I am now back. And today I'm going to pick up right where we left off, showing you how to handle a 500 internal server error in your Turbo Rails application. This video took me a little while to get posted because I kind of went down a rabbit hole in trying to figure out how to do this. I dug into the Turbo source code, uh, looking at the TypeScript and uh, all of the events going on, trying to figure out a way of doing this. Well, I did find a solution that works. It didn't take any modifying of the source code, and it's fairly simple. So uh, let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you where we left off in our last tutorial. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to gracefully handle those errors and present a more meaningful message to the end user. Let's get started. So here in the application, in the create controller, I've inserted a forced exception to be raised so that this will for certain end with a 500 internal server error when a user tries to create a new stunt node. Now let's hypothetically say that we're an end user in this application and we're trying to create a new note. So this will fail because of that error message that's uh, forced inside of the controller. And as you can see there, the post request failed. The status is 500. And if we inspect the data, we'll see that uh, the response contains an HTML page with the Rails output telling you what the error message is. However, as an end user, this isn't very useful because what does the end user see? Well, they just see a screen that looks like it failed. Uh, and we have a modal that broke and our modal form is gone. So there's two things wrong here. One is that we don't have an error message that the user will understand. So they're going to be really puzzled about what's happening. And the second thing that's wrong is that the form doesn't actually reset so that there's no way that the user could recover from this error without completely reloading the page and resetting the form. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a special stimulus controller and respective slim templates for creating an alert that will pop up and uh, that way we'll have the infrastructure in place for displaying an error message. And here you could see the alerts controller that I made. Uh, one of the things that you want to do when you're using Turbo and Stimulus JS is you kind of want to make your stimulus controllers recyclable and somewhat generic. So this is sort of a very general alert controller. And what we could do is we could create multiple alerts with this and we could pop up like various boxes on the screen and have them all linked to this controller and the behavior will be very similar. So we're going to have like a close button on each alert so that the user could close and dismiss it. If we look over here, here's a, an alerts container that's going to be inserted on the page. So we have the home index. Uh, on, on the home index page, we have the alerts container uh, rendered right here. Uh, and this is going to contain all the alerts that pop up. And whenever we want to render an alert, we can do that by simply adding a div with the error message to this here uh, using the generic alerts controller. So as you can see here, create alert, what it does is it looks for that alerts container right there, get element by ID, and uh, you provide it a uh, message uh, and uh, the type of alert, and then it will build it using the Twitter bootstrap alert box API. All right, so here's the snippet of code where that alerts controller is being referenced. Uh, we're inside of the modal box controller and uh, when an error occurs I'm having this handle server side error method get called and uh, it's going to call that create alert on the alerts controller which is referenced and imported here and as you can see it references this file that we were just looking at from the modal controller so now to actually read whether the HTML request succeeded or failed with the 500 error, I'm going to be making use of the turbo submit end event, which fires after the form is submitted and uh, the backend processes a request. And then event.detail will allow us to check the status of that request. It's going to be, uh, it's going to give us a false flag 
if the request was unsuccessful and we got that 500 error. So here we are looking at the form, the modal dialog box form. And uh, in here at the top level modal dialog where I specify the modal controller, we're also uh, having a data action there where I'm capturing the turbo submit and event at window. Don't forget to do that if you're uh, looking at those uh, window level events. Uh, and it goes to modal submit end. So here's the submit end event handler. And uh, notice that if it's not this particular this particular form, which is the uh, content form target, wh which I have here specified as the modal, modal target content form, uh, if that doesn't match up, then this uh, submit end event is not going to work. Uh, that way we're not processing events for other things that are uh, occurring on the page. Uh, and here we're doing event.detailsuccess to check whether that uh, returned with a 500 error or a 200. If it had a server-side error, um, then it will do, uh, it'll run that handle server-side error where it will display the alert. Oh, also the uh, close button target is, uh, is going to get clicked. So it's going to close the form by uh, essentially clicking the, uh, the X button on the modal which is something that I showed in my last video. So here we are, I'm going to create a, um, a request that's going to fail because we're forcing an exception. And let's see what happens. Okay, so we see the debugger, the debugger ended up here at, uh, at this point here, and it's gonna call handle server-side error. Let's see if that pops up the box. And it does, a server-side error occurred. And then next, it should close out this form. And there you go. So we have our dismissible alert. Now let's just check if we could try that action again by clicking new note and see what happens if we try to load the form. And as you could see there, the form seems to be broken now. We can't pull up this form again. That's because it didn't get to a state where it was properly reset. So we need to make this operation uh, what would be called an idempotent operation in computer terms. And that just means that the system resets to a state where if it fails, it would be like it never tried to run that failed operation. And then you could try it again without any consequence. Idempotent. Oops, never mind. It's idempotent, not idempotent. Now for resetting the contents of the form, all we really need is a link that uh, that performs a reset by going to the new stomp note path. Turbo is going to intercept this and it's going to repopulate the appropriate turbo frame, the stomp note form frame, with the uh, result of whatever this navigation query is going to be. To automate this, all we have to do is uh, programmatically click this link. So I'm going to make this essentially hidden, uh, but let's test it out just to show you how it's going to work. All right, so here we're going to open up the existing form, put some uh, something in it to change the state of it, and we're going to click Reset. And then what that did is it hit the new route, and uh, what we got back was the Turbo Frame ID. And Turbo, this is kind of the magic of it. When it makes a request like that and it finds a, a frame, it's smart enough just to pull out the um, part that it needs and get it to the right place. All right, so the final step that we have here is uh, we're going to hide off that reset button so that the user doesn't see it. I mean, maybe we could make that a feature later on, but uh, I don't really want that right now. So it's going to be hidden using the hidden class, which I have in the... CSS and then we're going to go back to our modal controller and as you can see I add an instruction here reset frame which goes to this method and that is going to programmatically click that reset button so let's go back to our form we're going to try another failed test here all right so I'm going to try to create that it's going to raise the 500 internal server error on the back end. As you can see right now, we're in the submit end event. Stopped at a debugger here. We're going to check the uh, result of this request. And it was unsuccessful. 
So that means that the error is going to display as a, uh, as a pop-up using Twitter Bootstrap. Uh, next, we're going to close the form and reset frame is going to load a new copy of this form in the background using that route that we just made or, or that link that we just made okay as you can see there we're right in reset frame now so now it's going to programmatically run that code so now we have our error message on the page and if we open this up we have a brand new form let's see what happens if we try to uh, make another fill request if it stacks up the error messages and there you go as you can see the error messages are stacked up we have multiple error messages now uh, showing up as alerts and our form is reset so we've successfully processed the 500 internal server error and displayed a meaningful message to the user and the uh, form is reset so that the operation was idempotent and we could rerun it again, hoping that maybe the error is fixed this time. Well, I certainly hope that this video tutorial was useful for you in learning Turbo Rails. If you found it to be useful, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe my channel as I'll be doing more tutorials about Ruby on Rails. And there's also the code on GitHub, so be certain to check out the GitHub link below and I'll see you in the next video.